Hello friends, this video on cell cycle and cell division part 13 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now we will talk about meiosis 2. Now for cells which do not want to take rest, they will directly enter into meiosis 2 after telophase 1. Um, uh, yeah, prophase 2. So what happens in prophase 2? It starts before the chromosomes are fully elongated. Now at the, by the end of telophase 1, what happens? The daughter chromosomes get divided. Now these daughter chromosomes will start getting I mean, uncoiled, it, it will again start to take the form of the chromatin. Now before it gets into that, before it gets fully elongated, what happens? Prophase 2 starts. So what happens in prophase 2? Here again, this step, this meiosis 2 will resemble a mitosis to a large extent. So here, the centrosomes will again start to migrate to opposite poles, that is the centrioles, and the spindle fibers will begin to form for the second meiotic division. So as you see here, the spindle fibers are formed. These microtubules will connect to the kinetochores. So nuclear membrane will again disappear, nucleolus will disappear, the chromosomes again become contact, compact. So this should start even before the chromosomes get converted to chromatin because by the end of telophase 1, the chromosomes again begin to uncoil and it again start to get elongated. So before it gets completely elongated, this phase should start where chromosomes should again get compact, nuclear membrane should vanish, uh, the centrioles should start forming the spindles that is the uh, microtubules again. So by the next phase that is metaphase 2, chromosomes again align at the equator to form the metaphase plate. So here if you look at this picture it resembles exactly mitosis. So here you have two chromosomes, they are connected through their kinetochore to the microtubules and they are all aligned at the equator forming the uh, metaphase plate. So it is the only difference is that here the equatorial plate itself is rotated by 90 degrees when compared to meiosis. So if you see the, the entire thing has been rotated a bit. Otherwise the concept is the same. So it forms the metaphase plate. The spindle fibers attach to kinetochores of sister chromatids. So now you see they are connected to sister chromatids. So you can guess what is going to happen in the next step. They are going to get separated. So now in the next step, the sister chromatids are going to get separated. Like how it used to be in case of mitosis. So in case of anaphase 2, simultaneous splitting of the centromere of each chromosome. So this will get splitted and the sister chromatids will start moving towards opposite poles. This, will, this movement will happen due to the kinetochore microtubules. However, because of the non-kinetochore microtubules, there will be elongation of the cell. And the last phase of meiosis 2, that is telophase 2, where um, the cells will get divided, that is cytokinesis. So nuclear membrane will again develop, cytokinesis will start. The, I am not explaining cytokinesis again because the process will remain the same as I discussed in mitosis. So a furrow will appear in case of animal cells and in case of plant cells, a cell plate will be formed and the cytoplasm will get divided. So the result, what is the result? four haploid daughter cells are formed. How four? Because these step, steps which I told you that is for one, that is when you start with one haploid cell which was formed as a result of meiosis one. But the same things will happen for the other cell as well. So you will get two. You, I mean to say you started with one diploid cell. After meiosis one, what did you get? We got two haploid cells. Now, each of these haploid cell will undergo meiosis 2, each of them. So, each of this haploid cell will give rise to two haploid cells like this. So, the total would be 4. So, here while explaining each of these steps of meiosis 2, I was just taking the example of one haploid cell. That is why we got 2 here. But similarly, 2 cells will be produced by this also. Now if you look at these cells, you see this and this, they don't resemble. This has a different recombination. This is also different due to recombination. Similarly, the other two which will be produced will also be different. And that is why we say that none of the four daughter cells which are produced resemble exactly to the 
parents. So they are all different with each other in, to some extent. So if you see, this is where we started from in, in meiosis 2 and this is where we ended up. So this was also haploid and this is also haploid. So now let us look at the meiosis overall process. So this is how it all started from prophase 1 where we started with a diploid cell. This underwent through prophase 1, metaphase 1, anaphase and it produced after telophase it produced two haploid cells. So these were haploid. And after this the sister chromatids again were separated and as a result four haploid cells were produced. So here if you see how many chromosomes you have, this is 1, this is 1, 2, this is 1, this is 1, 2. So total you have 4 chromosomes. How many chromosomes you have? You have 1, 2, again 1, 2. So the chromosome number has reduced by half. Now if you compare this to this, how many chromosomes you have? 1, 2, again 1, 2, again 1, 2, again 1, 2. So the chromosome number remains the same. So the haploid to haploid, this is diploid to haploid. Now please do not get confused. This is one chromosome. This red colored structure is one chromosome. Here also this X shaped structure is one chromosome. This is a condensed form of chromosome with two sister chromatids. But basically that is counted as one chromosome. Now let us quickly look at the significance and importance of meiosis. Now it helps in gametogenesis which is extremely important for sexual reproduction to take place. If gametes are not formed then organisms which reproduce sexually would not be able to reproduce at all. Chromosome number of each species is conserved. So when I say conserved what I mean to say is uh, let us suppose you start with a diploid cell. So when the diploid cell undergo meiosis, it produces haploid cells. Now, you might say that first it was diploid and you changed it to haploid. That's not good. But these haploid cells will again undergo fertilization or fusion, whatever you call it, and this will form a diploid cell. So basically the diploid nature of the cells is conserved. So we say that the chromosome number of a species is conserved. Increases genetic variability in organisms from generation to next. That is because uh, meiosis is all about sexual reproduction where uh, recombination takes place. Since recombination takes place, that is why all the daughter cells which are produced as a result of meiosis, they do not, they are not exactly identical to their parents. So some new traits are observed. And variations are something which is extremely important for the process of evolution. You can look at this picture. This couple have two kids. And if you see, some of the features are similar to the parents. For example, this guy has brown hair which is similar to his mom. This guy has black hair which is similar to his dad. Whereas if you see, this guy has got blue eyes but none of them have blue eyes. But the boy has got blue eyes. So this is a variation. This is a new trait. Now small small variations like this give rise to evolution. Gives rise to formation of new organism over a long period of time. And that is how the entire evolution, biological evolution have come into being. For example, you would have heard that all the organisms that exist on this earth today. Starting from an insect. A human being, a lion, a tiger or any aquatic animal. It is said that everything evolved from one bacteria. So that means for, from one bacteria over a period of time some variations which existed in nature gradually gave rise to some other new organism. So variation is something, genetic variation is something which is desirable and meiosis increases genetic variability. So these are some of the uh, important, uh, impo these are some of the points which make meiosis very very important or significant. Now let us quickly have a comparison between mitosis and meiosis. So in mitosis two diploid daughter cells are produced whereas in meiosis haploid daughter cells are produced. So the chromosome numbers are reduced by half. Mitosis important role in asexual reproduction. I'm so sorry. It is just the, op I've just written the opposite. 
So this is for meiosis and this is for mitosis. So when you say mitosis, they play an important role in growth, cell repair, asexual reproduction. But when you talk about meiosis, they play an important role in sexual reproduction, that is gametogenesis. Please make a note that it is uh, the opposite here. Mitosis is divided into four stages, that is prophase, metaphase, anaphase and telophase. Whereas meiosis is divided into two phases or two cycles, meiosis 1 and meiosis 2. And each of these cycles have four stages. In mitosis, the daughter cells are exactly identical to parent, whereas in meiosis, daughter cells show genetic variations. That is again one important uh, difference. Mitosis, the concept lies behind pairing and recombination. I'm sorry, it is all messed up. So this is again for meiosis and this is for mitosis. So here replication and splitting. So the DNA gets replicated and then it is split to the daughter cells. In case of meiosis, it is first paired up and then recombined so that crossing over can take place and uh, genetic variations can come into picture. So replication and splitting in case of mitosis, pairing and recombination in case of meiosis. So these are some of the points of difference between mitosis and meiosis. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.